There it is. Hey, there Tracy. Go. How are you doing? I'm good. It's Friday. <laughs> Fridays are good for you, huh? They are. And we'll figure out how you do it. Um, is this on an every Friday schedule? People have been asking that, sort of, kind of. Probably I'll skip next Friday because I'll be on vacation. Um, but I don't know. It, it depends. So my boyfriend has okay. to work. So um, if he's working, then I might just do it. Do it. Do it. Do <laughs> it. I, I love, I'm a, a fan of like every week that you just know it's the same set time. Yeah. And um, I'm, he, yeah, we usually close Friday at 12 anyway, yeah. so doing it at this time is like, I don't, I don't usually have anything to do at this time unless the court like makes me go to court, which is just, they don't respect my Friday afternoon off schedule, unfortunately. Okay, so there's 58 people so far. Oh, someone else. So we'll give it maybe like one more minute. Awesome. Well, I take it everybody's on here because they love automations. How many people put in the chat? How many people feel like you have at least three or four good automations working in your business? Or who feels like that's just an area they need to work on? <laughs> and listen, no judgment. We're all a work in progress. We're constantly always adding more automations to what we do, trying new options, new programs. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of good stuff in there. I love it. I'm seeing some. I'm seeing a few need to work on it. I'm going to give you guys some examples of little easy things that we can do. Small little setups. And Regina, the queen of automations is always encouraging me to do even more, so. It's all geared towards like how much nap time I can squeeze out of every day. <laughs> like that's, that's my overall goal. <laughs> um, let's see, a few more. I want you all to know that Regina's nap time is sacred no matter what country she's in we are oh, in sure. paris together and Regina's like i'm out <laughs> it's time to go take a nap it's afternoon um it was awesome <laughs> what well, ate like a whole bunch of cheese too so it wasn't my fault i was so tired <laughs> um all right so we'll probably just go ahead and get started and i'll just let people in we've got about 80 people so far oh i need to make uh you the host hold on no, i could do it i can Oh, you can still share. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I am super excited that Regina is doing this and we're kicking off um, series number one. I hope she does it every Friday and I plan to be in on some of them just to watch because there's a ton of coaches out there that have great materials. Um, so Regina, I uh, tried to hit all the highlights there for you. Lawyer, traveler, hiker, Systems lover and NFL super fan. What else you got? <laughs> Just professional napper. That's it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so you guys, when I was creating this quick little PowerPoint for everybody, we wanted to have some examples of some systems and such. I had to grab some pictures from Regina and I being in Paris together. Um, we're going to be back there in September. I'm super excited. And um, it's always cool to get out of your own environment and see how other people do things and learn from other places in the world because you know getting out of your comfort zone and seeing things from a different perspective is a great way to see how well people do or how poorly people do like sometimes the wait staff in Paris aren't so polite and it's not a great customer experience and other times it could be fabulous and you can learn a lot from it. So um, listen, life is an adventure. Get out there and experience life and um, get in there and like sample and see and decide what you want to take back to your business and implement and do in your business. So um, anyways, I just thought I'd start off there. 
Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kristen David. I'm a lawyer by trade, ran my own law firm for 15 years, practically, and then built it up and sold it. When I sold my law firm, my policies and procedures manuals were about an inch thick between all the different departments. And it was a $100,000 negotiating point in the sale price of my business. It's what made my business turnkey. It's what allowed me to hire a paralegal and get them up to um, speed with the, in like within three to five days. Um, I'm a big systems lover. It's what gave me back my freedom from working 85 hours a week to back down to 35. Um, it's what allows me to run a virtual company now and travel the world running my business. Um, I literally just onboarded a new EA last week. And so this is the end of week two and she's already managing my emails and running everything for me. She's an amazing, amazing staffer from Get Staffed Up and um, absolutely love Juanita, but I couldn't have onboarded her and gotten her so much depth without systems. So yes, part of the discussion today is about systems and how to automate it. So um, uh, yes, I hear the chime. I don't know how to turn that off. Can someone tell me? <laughs> I don't know if you can actually turn it off at this point, because sometimes it's got to be set up early on. Um, but it definitely would be on your side, Regina. So you can see if you can. Uh, well, I keep, keep oh, going. No, I got it. Yeah, I can turn it off. Okay. I think. Yeah, I turn it off. Sorry. <laughs> see, we're all we're all like learn as you go. Right. <laughs> So listen, everybody, please, um, I'm gonna, I love using the chat, having this interactive, but ask questions. So raise your hand or ask in the chat and we'll try to uh, get it, you know, get to your questions. We want this to be time well spent and valuable. So with that, Regina, let's jump in. Um, I know we're gonna talk about some automation opportunities. I'm gonna talk some systems some procedures. You've got an amazing Airtable example. And I want to make sure everybody leaves with yeah. some steps of where to get started. What else do you have that you want to make sure we cover today? Uh, yeah, that's, no, that's pretty much it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So listen, everyone, building systems is what helps you create that client journey that you want them to have. So that automation and the, the just step-by-step -step going through, think of it as a bunch of arrows. One leads to the next, one leads to the next. Sometimes kind of like this black curly Q1, it doesn't always go as planned, that's okay. Those are opportunities for improvement um, because listen, every now and then you get a client in that it just goes a little sideways. Trust me, I did legal malpractice defense. I get it. <laughs> Not every client is going to be as smooth of a journey, but we want to build so that 90% of your clients are a nice, smooth journey through. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about a little bit of different opportunities for automating your client communications from intake that's when you first get the client in and they call your office or they do an online form. How do we gather some of that information to see, should we schedule them for a sales consultation? During that time, once we say yes, we want to automate the preconditioning process. So what is a preconditioning process? Well, preconditioning is the client's mindset. Do they want to hire us? We want to precondition them to want to hire us. Meanwhile, there's pre-screening. That's part of your intake. That's our mindset. Do we want them as a client, right? And wherever possible, you don't want to have it so manual. We want to automate. We want to let people self-select if they're ready to move forward or if they just want some information, right? Don't have tire kickers waste your precious time if they're not ready to pay a lawyer to move forward. So intake is our pre-screening method, that's our mindset. Pre-conditioning is their mindset, pre-conditioning them to want to hire you. We want to get both of those as automated as we can ahead of time. Then you come to the sales consultation. That's the conversation. Now, in that, we also want to be a little bit automated and a little bit on like a natural flow. You don't want it to be clunky. You don't want to have to redo it all the time. And this is where you can have, whether you're using 
emails or um, a practice management software. You have different elements where it can send them information. It can pop things on their screen. It can give them more of an automated interactive experience rather than just a plain old phone call. Um, back in the day, you used to have people come into your offices. A lot of people don't do that anymore. And so we're missing the visual aspect. So maybe you're on a phone call with somebody, we can have that visual automated, hey, here's a, 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 a diagram or a flow chart of what's going to happen. And you've got it set up to automatically email it to them right at the beginning of the phone call. Now, when you're on the phone call five minutes in, you can say, yeah, just check your email and there's an automation, there's a, a diagram there for you. And so you literally are already in front of what's going to happen and it's all smooth and automated. So again, we want to like take every opportunity to automate some of this information. Obviously, when you're onboarding, we want to onboard the client, automate a bunch of that client communication, explain to the client what's going on. Mid case, uh, you want to be, again, talking to the client, explaining and even all the way to the very end of a case where we have that VIP case wrap up. By the way, this is where you really turn people into that raving fan and send, have them send you referrals. We want to have that all automated, some emails, a little welcome or a little thank you box or a gift, or there's so many little things you can do to make that just such an amazing experience. And it can be really low price too. $15, $20 item doesn't have to be like a $100 gift. So again, the key is in automating and wowing your customer through this whole journey. So, so uh, just one, go ahead, Regina. I was going to pick up on a couple of things that you said in regarding the, the, the preconditioning. So some people include in their intake questions, are you ready to hire an attorney or do you just have questions? And that sends people off in two different directions in your funnel. So most people that call me, I'm a divorce attorney. They, they really want a divorce. <laughs> there are a lot of people that are like, you know what? I'm thinking about divorce four years in the future. I just want questions. No, people usually want to hire. So I, I kind of have that one funnel. But if you're in a practice area where people just kind of want a tire kick, that's fine. They can just go into a funnel with just different sort of a drip campaign versus people that are ready to hire. They would go into a completely different funnel and then you would serve them, you know, that way. Yeah. And, and it's true, like estate planning and some of the other ones where people are just a little uncertain is now the time. Should I do it? There are a lot more tire kickers versus criminal law, family law. Like <laughs> they're ready. It's time to get divorced. It's time to get that criminal attorney on board. So, you know, you each have some different experiences. Um, let me throw out another example or two, because I saw at the beginning of as pre, before we got started, we asked people where they were from and practice areas. And I saw a bunch of um, employment law, business law, um, some um, other just, you know, immigration, different things. There's a lot of opportunity in the intake and preconditioning to give people good information and remind them that they're in the right place. Because part of this is getting them to recognize that you are the right firm for them and that they are in the right place. So you say, you know, we've done this for thousands of clients or hundreds of clients, and we've used this formula or blueprint or process or, you know, this framework. And you're telling the story that you know this stuff, like you are the right fit for them. So in that, that, that automated preconditioning, you're literally getting in front of some of their objections that they might ask later on. And again, like Regina said, getting them to self-select out if they're not yet ready, here, click here for more information. And they don't have to come through the rest of the funnel right now. So or even if you're not the right firm for them or if they don't have a case, you know, sometimes the way that you treat a client during the intake process leads them to refer you to other people. Like I've decline people all the time. Like, I don't think you have a good modification case. You had a full trial three months ago. So I really don't think this is the optimum time for a modification. Um, but, you know, explaining that and sending them some videos and some, some literature and kind of giving them tips about how to make basically how to live with their current order that has kind of led to referrals down the line. Um, mm -hmm. With gifts, Kristen is a really good gift giver. <laughs> she sends cheese. <laughs> 
Um, I, I send candles. So when I do a final trial in person, I bring a candle. If the client is, and you know this by the time you get there, happy to be divorced, <laughs> then I have a candle that says, I did, I do, I'm done. And they just love it. Um, or if it's a modification case, I have a candle that says smells like your case is over. But by that time, you know your client and you know whether or not it's a sad time for them or it's a happy time for them. Um, but I try to you know, come up with something that would kind of match the occasion, even if they're kind of sad about the divorce. But honestly, 99% of my clients are like super happy. So they, they, they love the candle, but think of something that would match them, their personality, um, then also kind of, you know, reflects you. And I just, I love candles. So. Yeah. And, and that's a great one. Also mid case. Sometimes it's like just a card. It's automated that three weeks into the relationship, it's a basic card that says, we're on, you're on your way, just breathe. It's going to take a couple months. It's going to take some time. Just keep breathing and, move, and we'll help you move forward. You know, it can be a generic, but it just acknowledges that they're on this journey and that you're on the journey with them. And that little acknowledgement can go such a long way as to creating that raving fan status. So awesome. one of the things okay. I've learned about family law is it's, it's about perception. And one of my favorite quotes is, you know, I think it's Angela, my shit, I'm going to mess it up. My Angela <laughs> that says people may forget. I can't remember the exact quote, but basically they will never forget how you made them feel. I can't remember yeah. the first part of it. Yeah. So, you know, that's what, that's kind of what my practice is about is, you know, if we go to trial, we lay it out on the line, the client knows it and they've seen the effort and they see, they see that we care. So even if we don't get a great result, they're still happy with the fact that, you know, we have done absolutely everything. Um, because I've seen cases where, you know, attorneys show up, they don't remember their client's name. And at that point, you've been paid like $50,000. If you can't be bothered to learn your client's kids' names, like stop, stop doing it. Um, <laughs> so there's a perception out there that, you know, if you're, if you're communicating often with the client, that's what they remember. If they feel like they're in the loop, if I like to share exhibits ahead of time, I kind of give them overload of information because the number one complaint I, I hear is I don't get to talk to my, from other people. I don't get to talk to my lawyer. I have no idea what's going on. I gave them all this information and they didn't use it. Now, probably 95% of that information is, is useless and that's fine, but that's a conversation that you have to have with the client throughout the process. Um, and that all just leads to the perception of, okay, they got the information and now they're explaining why this is relevant and this isn't. And I think a lot of attorneys sometimes sort of skip that step. They're like, I'm the expert. I know what I'm doing. And they just barrel forward. And to be perfectly honest, I used to do it that way too. <laughs> but that's just not how our, our clients want to be handled a lot of times. They want to know um, that you are at least receiving the information that you've reviewed it and you've processed it and you've synthesized it. And then you ended up where you were because of a specific reason, as opposed to you just didn't, you couldn't be bothered to read it. So that's a mindset shift that I had to do. And I've had to automate a lot of stuff in order for it not to take a ton of time to get to that point, but. Yeah. So listen, I want to get everybody in the chat. Um, please, uh, Give a thumbs up or just give a smiley face if if you all if you feel like you you love all these ideas but you're feeling a little bit of overwhelm right now uh, and you're like oh my gosh I want to do all of this but where do I get started so just give us a smiley face a thumbs up let us know you're still there I like the upside down smileys yeah. are great too <laughs> okay so well, let's get into helping you guys start building some systems and processes to get these automations in place. Because let's just be honest, lawyers are not always the best people to be need to be responsible for starting some of these automations. Um, they're busy, they get started on other things. So we want to create triggers based on some dates or an assistant that knows what to do. Um, so it's not all sitting on one human's brain to remember to do all these extra things. So we, thank you for all the love and the smileys. Those are awesome. I love the creative ones. Um, so let's take a step back for a minute, everyone. And let's just talk about building systems. What is a system? I talk about systems all the time. This is a diagram I use. First, we start with the policy. Why are we doing this? Sometimes you wanna to explain to your team and just clarify for yourself, what's the purpose? Why are we doing this stage, this step, this item? 
Then we go into the old fashioned step-by-step -step procedure, the standard operating procedure. That's the who shall do what by when, right? That's the step-by-step. -step. And that's wonderful for when you first hire a person, they read it for the very first time. But let's be honest, somebody that's been with you for a few months, they're not going back and rereading a page and a half of procedures every time. They're using a checklist. Now, checklists are your biggest profitable way. You can increase your profit margin by two to 3% in your business just by using more checklists. Because what happens is humans sit there going, oh, there's seven steps. I, I have five of them. Um, what am I forgetting? And they waste 20 to 30 seconds of mental energy trying to remember. Versus if they can just look at a checklist, they run their finger down, boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's right. These two things off and going, right? You're empowering that person in a positive light. You're also reducing the risk of error. Let me tell you, I was a legal malpractice defense attorney for 15 years. I can tell you about the errors where staff or team or attorneys start something and don't finish. And had they just had a checklist it would tell them, oh, you only got through step four. You need to do two more things or three more things. So that checklist is really just a synthesized abbreviation of the procedure. It's just little bullet points. What are the key elements that need to get done? Now, today's day and age, you've got a lot of people that learn by video. They're very visual learners. I'm a visual learner. A quick little two minute video, three minute video. Here's how we file this document. Here's how we pull this template and use it. Here's how you save this information. Here's how you receive the discovery from opposing counsel or uh, from the client, right? A quick three, four minute video. Don't make it 10 or 20 minutes. Nobody's got time to go back and watch that. Short little condensed videos will do so much to help someone get up to speed and say, boom, this is how we do it. It also, when you have to train it, it anchors in the learning for yourself as well or for whoever's doing the video. So it has an extra process. Also, those visual learners, a flow chart or a diagram. We, we have a whole workflows and workloads boot camp. People love it, especially my visual learners, because it like shows what the process needs to be and what needs to happen. Um, those templates and examples, how many of us, you know, whether it was in law school or your first job, you went to go do something, you're like, man, if I could just see what perfect looks like, what is the end product supposed to look like, right? Instead, you got thrown in and you had no idea what the heck you were doing. You're like, well, like the statute says this, but man, if I could just see what this was supposed to look like at the end, it would be great. So we want to drop in a folder, a bunch of examples, and eventually those get set side by side and you can see where the language is always the same and you create a template out of that. Now, some of you have tapped into Regina's materials and have used some of her amazing templates or examples and things like that, which can be so, so helpful. Some of you have been doing it yourself. Some of you are sitting there thinking, eek, I need to work on this part. And no judgment, we're all work in progress. But this is where I want you all thinking about how can you better build out your systems and organize yourself. And that's what gives more clarity for creating the automations so that we know what is it, why are we trying to do it? What is it we're doing? And then there's a little flow chart and then it's easy to automate the process. And I'll Regina? be showing examples of basically all of my stuff. So everything that uh, she just talked about, my checklist, I have an example of that, my intake flow chart, my onboarding guide. So um, so you'll see basically how I've, I've actually put all of this stuff into action. Woohoo! I love it. I love it. <laughs> so listen, I've got a couple of examples here too, and then we'll pop over and have Regina share her screen. Um, procedures, you know, procedures that documentation is what creates the clarity. Um, so who's on the team? What, what's the legal assistant do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly? What does the paralegal do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, right? It creates that clarity, but it also, it gives us that opportunity to create some automations and reduce those mistakes. So when we start documenting the procedures, it really creates, um, 
the framework so then it's easy to automate. I think a lot of people try to start automating and it gets clunky because we forget steps inadvertently, right? We The brain just jumps from A to C to F and we forget little, and then we have to try to go back and rework the automation. And it's easier when you lay it out first on paper and then automate it. That, that's tip number one, lay it out on paper or, you know, on computer and then, and then automate. If you jump in with automation right away, sometimes it gets a little clunky. So automation opportunities, here's one with an estate planning example. You know, when we do the initial strategy meeting, that's the, you know, the, the client signed up and now we're going to do that initial sit down with the client and we can automate a few things like, Hey client, we really look forward to meeting you for your initial strategy meeting. Please make sure you've filled out these worksheets. Please make sure you bring these items with you. Please make sure you have the correct spellings of names, right? So we can automate the reminders, automate and set the expectations. Then after the meeting, you might have to obtain more information from the client. Great, let's automate those. Hey client, here's the, a reminder of the things we need. And three days later, hey, client, just a reminder to make sure you get us all the things we need, right? And so you, you automate this process and these reminders. Now, you can have a little, if you've already returned everything, thank you so much for being on top of this. And it's okay if they get a duplicate email like that, even though they've already responded, eventually your automation might be knowledgeable enough to say, oh, they completed it. You can take them out of the automation, but don't get overly worried about that in the beginning. I would rather a client get one extra email reminder than the 30 other people that didn't get, the, you know, get you the stuff that needs the reminder. So um, sometimes you just build drafting legal documents. This is another great place for automations reviewing items with the client, setting that expectation. Dear client, we wanna send you documents to review. We need you to A, review them, B, call and, or click this link and schedule an appointment, C, get on with the attorney and review them, and D, make sure you've had all your questions answered, right? Little automated emails can help make that review with a client an amazing experience rather than a clunky, they forgot, they don't know what they're doing here, right? So little tiny automations with just an email sequence can be really helpful. Or your Clio or Filevine or Smokeball or whatever practice management software might have some of these. So again, Regina, you're going to show us some that you're using, yeah? Uh, yes. And I was yeah. also going to say um, with the initial, when someone's calling in initially, I like to give people homework because I don't take calls live. Most people know this about me. I don't answer the phone. I avoid the phone like play. I don't answer the phone. I don't take transfers. Um, and this doesn't work for every practice area, but we call people back within 24 hours, but we give them homework in the meantime. Even if you are taking the call right away, that doesn't preclude you from immediately having an email and a text going out. So even while you're on the phone with them, you can say, hey, look, we've, we've sent you a text with the next thing to do. If it's a criminal case, give them a list of, list of things like don't talk to the police or gather these documents for PI. Okay. You need to run around and get your medical records, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know anything about family <laughs> law, but <laughs> with family law, what I do know is if I'm trying to do a modification or hold someone in contempt of a previous order, I don't like to talk to the client further until I've seen their previous court orders because people don't read them and they'll just tell me something's in the order and it's not. So I like to give them homework. So whatever it is that you really like to have when you're initially talking with a client or when you're your intake salesperson is talking to the client, give them homework in advance. And they get the homework, they get the upload link, they start to feel a little more invested in their firm as opposed to just hearing, oh, the attorney can't talk right now, they'll call you back, they'll just call somebody else. So, but if they're given an actual assignment to do, then you can, they'll hang in there a little bit longer than if you don't, put it that way. So this is spot on with the next slide where this was an example of the estate planning worksheet. You know, the firm shall establish a digital form that allows the client to upload the following documents. Um, or note whether the document exists or doesn't exist. And so again, this is giving the client homework. You know, please get us copies of any and all prior wills, codicils, trust agreements, 
give us a list of all family members with complete legal names and nicknames and specify their relationship and their birthdays, um, right? Like you give them that homework. And for some of you, you might do that in an initial document. Some of you might do it after the, the they sign up with you. I mean, at different times you can use um, the things. So Angel had a great question. How can we automate the homework when every case is different? Um, so again, you might have three or four estate planning dash single person, right? And we might have a better name for that so that it's, it's a clue to us which one is which. You might have estate planning complex. You might have estate planning um, special needs trust, right? Like you could have different homeworks and it could say in the instructions, in general, the following are items that we often get from our clients please go down. And this might be where you have another little column here that says, does this item exist? Yes or no. Um, and, or it could have a NA, not applicable column. Um, so that either you or they could say, I'm not sending you this because it doesn't seem to be applicable. And then you might come back and say, no, actually that was applicable. We need it. Or, or you can pre, you know, say, during the meeting, you could check off, we don't need these items or th something like that. So um, I think part of the rule is, with a template is it's a guideline. It's never perfection. And some people, they won't have stocks and bonds and other things, but it's still in general, 75% of the people have something. And so we're going to want to list it in there. So yes, we want to give some different homework and we try to be as generalized as we can. Um, and make it work. And we fine tune it as we go. So Kristen, okay. I'll um, share my screen and yeah. uh, maybe. Hold see. on, let me shop, stop share, or you might be able to grab it back. Um, I should be able to. So hopefully I'm sharing the right thing. Okay, yeah. so this is my Lawmatics um, original. This is my initial email. This is the email that everybody gets. And I'm trying to cover all of my bases because I do family law, but I'm also doing some estate planning, except right now, which is exactly what this tells you. So the initial text is, hey, it's me. We offer flat fees. Um, we can help you with a family law case. We'll call you soon if you reach us after hours. So I'm basically setting their expectations um, from the beginning. This is when we close. We close 12 on Fridays. We need to review your documents if there's a case in progress or if you're trying to uh, change or enforce a previous order. This is my link to upload the document. So this is a text that they're getting so they can just click on the text. And I say that we're not accepting estate planning cases. This covers most of my basis. So I do get a lot of, not a lot, but some responses that say, hey, I haven't filed a case yet. I don't have any documents. And that's, that's fine. Um, but for the rest, I get the documents pretty much immediately. So before my person even calls them back, we've received the complaint that the other you know, side has, has, has filed. So the intake person is able to say, oh, I see that you're with judge so-and-so and, um, you know, they've been on the bench for 20 years, you know, just as long as Regina's been practicing, just so something to make it a little bit more personal, but basically you, you make the initial homework as generic as possible. So you're not alienating something where they're like, this has absolutely nothing to do with me. Um, but it is going to capture a lot. So I really do get a lot of responses, um, based on that initial email with people uploading documents. Um, cause, cause can anyone see my Zoom, my Loom, shoot, I can not talk today, Loom yeah. library. Yeah. So these are all the Loom videos that I have and I have a lot. So when I'm onboarding somebody, they can watch anything, anytime I have to do something to, to explain it to someone, I just capture a video and I send it to the client. I also do this for, I mean, to, to people in my staff, but I also do it outward facing for clients, how to, to fill out a financial affidavit, for example, um, because those can be difficult and I get tired of explaining it. Um, but even if it's, it's something simple, this one is how to copy file names into a worksheet. But so I don't have to explain it over again. I just shoot a Loom video and then send, send them the link. I also um, have a trial that was um, posted on YouTube and went viral for some reason, but someone recorded it and sent it to me. So I'm able to um, show it. So I have my, um, my staff review it as well. So the point is I have a video for pretty much everything that happens internally with my system and also externally that the client needs to do. For example, this is the one I send filling out the financial affidavit. 
So you can send the link individually. I don't like to do that because I'm lazy. So what I do is I have it all in my onboarding guide. So the link to this is, I will put it in the chat later. It's, um, but the point is, if you send them a link, then it's automatically going to update it. You update it behind the scenes. The link never changes and you don't, you don't have to keep sending them information. So let's get through that. Um, so this obviously has a lot of information about their case, what's going to go on. And I actually put this in my email signature as well. So potential clients see it. It's in the first thing that you saw, which is the initial text that goes out, which explains basically how they are going to work with us. And I like to send it ahead of time and ask the client if they've reviewed it during our consultation, because I want to make sure that they're okay with our process and how we handle things before they pay me money and hire. Because if someone doesn't know how to email and they don't know how to scan, they are not gonna be my ideal client. And I don't take those cases. So um, I have all the information that this is information they need to gather. Um, I have information about my client um, communication policy, client responsibility. I, I shove everything in here, the timeline, uh, managing their expectations. And towards the end, I have, these are all different videos. These are my Loom videos that I have embedded into this client guide so they can just click on it. So pretty much all of the questions that the clients have are already answered in this client guide. So I can just say, hey, just look at your client guide, page 13. Um, and it's already there. So I, I love this because I can obviously change it on the back end and the link doesn't change for the client, uh, but it, it packs a lot of information into, you know, a short little format. And I used Canva to do it, which is super, super easy. Um, what else? Hold on, I have to let some more people into the waiting room. <laughs> From the waiting room. Okay, so what I also do is, these are my vacation days. And so when I change them here, they're going to change in like 15 different areas. So for example, on the onboarding guide, let me go back to the beginning. <clears throat> and that's so because you have it embedded, correct? Yes, I have it embedded. I have it embedded in Canva. Um, that's gonna make me manually go back. Um, but obviously when I change it in the Google doc it's automatically going to change here. So there, it's changed there. And it's also in the, in the client's portal. So I'll show you that. So this is the client portal. So whatever portal that you're using, um, you can, most of them, I think, just embed HTML code, which is a little more difficult to do, but you could find someone on Fiverr to do it pretty cheap, I'm sure. Um, but this is my portal, and this is my template portal, and this is all the information that they see. So I love this vacation announcement on the right. So I can put any announcement there, but I give them so much advance warning of when I'm going to be out of the office. Um, so they really can't complain. So it's there. It's in their fee agreement. They actually signed the fee agreement acknowledging my vacation dates. It's in the client guide. It's in my email signature. It's all over the place. So there's <laughs> never a surprise when I'm going to be out of the office, um, which is what I really advise everyone to do so you don't go on vacation and your clients wait I didn't know you were going on vacation I have this really important issue and it's never important but that's not the point the point is you have to tell them ahead of time when you're going on vacation so they do not complain so this is all the information I put on the main page um, this is the link to the onboarding guide um, this is the case status I tell them basically don't ask me anything <laughs> unless this date is two weeks in the past and I'll show you how I how I update that information. So that is their case update. I also include information about mediation. I explain the folder structure of the portal um, and what each folder in the portal is. I This is explanation of how to navigate the portal. Um, again, these are my vacation dates, my communication policy. My clients see this every single time they log on to the portal. So it's just kind of, it should be <laughs> kind of embedded in their brain. All right. So in terms of updating the client, this is where I do that. So if I have an update, let's see, I'll just delete that. So I've, I've updated it here and you'll see that the last modified changes and what happens then, of course, it automatically is going to update here. I'll hit refresh. And if I've done it correctly, it should send an email to the client as well. So when I update it on my end internally, then I don't have to do anything externally in order for the client to see it. And you can see that it's automatically updated. Now let's see if the email went out. Oh, there it is. Perfect. 
So this is the email that they get. So as soon as I, up, I update the status, they get an email saying, this is what your status is. Have a great day. And it's personalized. It has their client. Um, it has the client's name in there. So that's what I've been doing to feed information to the client with me doing a very little amount of work. Um, and so also I have a case plan that's, there's probably another post about it in my group. So I have a case plan document that I created and some of you purchased. I actually put it all into Airtable. So this sort of gets into the checklist. And really all it is is a, is a, is a checklist for your practice for all the different stages of your practice in one area. So I did it in Google Sheets, I did it in Excel, and then I exp and I put it into Airtable as well. So that's all it is. So for onboarding, these are all the steps that I need to do. Um, I created one called Issues and Evidence Needed. So in most divorce cases, these are the issues that I find, you know, come up more most often. And I just make sure that every single thing is addressed as we go along so I can tailor my discovery and my good faith letters around these issues that, you know, I need to have addressed. Same thing with initial documents. These are all the initial documents I need. I have checklist for discover. I have checklist for everything. <laughs> I have checklist for mediation. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, this is all prior to mediation. The ones on the bottom is what happens after mediation. And I show the clients all this stuff too. Um, actually, one of the things I learned in, in Paris is making perfume is way more complicated than I thought. Those people have master's degrees and PhDs. And I just thought people just mixed fragrances together and it just wasn't a big deal. It's a big deal. And I feel like sometimes we hide the making of the sausage from the client when we shouldn't. So I kind of like to go through all of these things with the client and say, these are all of the issues that you know we've identified and that we are working on. Is there anything else? Because of course, there's going to be some extra issues. There are going to be some outliers. But these base sort of checklists are going to work for the majority of your cases. And then of course, I have a trial prep um, checklist and I can assign it to anybody. And then when it's done, I can see when it's done. So you can do this on paper. You can do this in Clio, any of your practice management systems, you can shove this in. I just happen to be using Airtable um, to do that. So that's that. Awesome. Like I said, everyone, Regina's like the systems queen. I love it. Talking my language. It's like talking my love language. <laughs> yeah, someone asked me about my portal. It's clinked. I use clinked because it's, I have a, I got a lifetime code from AppSumo like in 2019, I paid 300 bucks mm -hmm. and I was using it prior to that. So I was happily paying $250 a month for that sucker. And then I paid $300 a month, 300 in 2019. And I haven't paid since. So it's, it's a really good, um, app. So on the channel, on the Lori's on the Beach channel, I have four videos, I think, dedicated yeah. to Clink to show you how I use it. So it's it's fantastic. I think everybody's ready to pay you to help them build it out. But here's the thing, everyone. It's, um, and Lisa Ann just asked the question, how do you develop these systems? It's setting up and creating a kind of a chronological flow. Um, so this is a kind of a, I, I grabbed this from our legal systems manual. This happens to be the chapter on civil litigation. And you literally just start, let's break it into stages or phases, like, okay, initial case workup. And there's all kinds of this star means there's a bunch of places to automate this process and to reach out to the client, tell them what they need to do, set the expectations like Regina talked about, then do the meeting and then the assessment, get it in. Like there's a, just a series of steps that have to go. Then we go to part B, the pleadings and motions, right? What are the ones we have to consider? Um, you might not need to do a change of venue, or maybe you're the plaintiff and you're filing. Um, so it's consider which venue before you file. Um, you know, but we can automate a lot of these reminders, these steps, these elements, um, discovery, I mean, from PI attorneys and and family law and different practice areas, there's a lot of discovery that changes hands back and forth. There's a lot of ways you can organize that and automate. Did we get this in? Did we get an update? Do we need to ask for more updates? Um, so that you don't have to waste mental energy and there's less mistakes that happen when you use those checklists and that flow. So the, the point is, is it, almost in every phase of the case, there are areas to automate and areas to create checklists that create a structure. Um, and then once you have it kind of laid out, 
then you can use the programs like air tables and, but I mean, even in the beginning word and Excel is a great way to get started. And then you want to integrate with whatever your practice management is or what systems you're using. Um, so, um, Regina, are you having to use Zapier to do zaps to get information? Or are you just making sure the programs you're using already integrate directly? It, it depends. I'm not because someone did ask, how do you get them all to talk to each other? I don't need them all to talk to each other. So I just keep the multiple tabs open and I go back and forth. Um, I do have some zap set up. And when I do my full air, air table um, webinar, which is going to probably be at the end of the month, I zap all of my emails into Airtable and it automatically bills for them. Um, but I don't necessarily need everything to talk to each other because I honestly, I kind of like the separation. I, I like using different um, different software for different parts of my practice because I'm constantly trying to like up level. <laughs> so if I don't <laughs> like, if I don't like one particular thing, like I, my CRM, I've probably changed three times in the last four years. So I don't want it to be all in one because when I find a better CRM, I wouldn't be able to That's just about. change my CRM and nothing else. So I really don't need them to talk to each other. Zapier will solve a lot of your problems. Again, when I do the Airtable presentation, I found a new um, app called ply.io. Um, I zoomed with someone else that was using Airtable and doing it at a level that was just crazy. And she's the one that told me about it. So uh, that's another way to sort of stitch sort of these programs together. Um, I like doing this stuff. It makes me happy. So I have no problem doing it. If it does not make you happy and you just want the end result, then you just throw <laughs> some money at the problem. And there are people on Fiverr that will do this for not a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so even yeah. with Airtable, I've found the guy, he was like 20 bucks an hour in the Philippines or something. I got on a Zoom call with him and he had my dashboards and air tables up in like 14 minutes. It was crazy. Yeah. So you actually touched on a great point. So I jumped ahead to this slide because, um, I mean, literally this is where you want your intake and sales process to like integrate and to like, it's its own little world. And then once you get into, okay, they've hired you, boom, now you're into the legal systems, right? And connected, but a little bit separate are the client happiness systems, which is, you know, listen, everybody as an owner, you get busy and you no longer have the chance to follow up with every client, say, how are you doing? Do you have any questions? That's what a client happiness coordinator does. Now, it might only be for five hours a week, but and it might be also the same human who wears the reception hat, the assistant hat, the paralegal hat, right? But somebody on the team should have that separate role um, for at least a few hours a week to, to be that quality control, to ask the clients how they're doing, to get testimonials, to find out if there's complaints or problems, right? Because the legal team is stuck here doing the legal stuff. And you kind of need somebody to pop over off to the side and just be that quality control to create those raving fans. But that's also where we can automate a whole bunch of those check-ins. Hey, how are you doing? Are we doing a great job? What could we do better, right? Give people a chance to voice their concerns so we can nip them in the bud early. Don't let somebody simmer and get pissed. And next thing you know, Trust me, I was a legal malpractice defense attorney. It simmers and simmers. And next thing you know, they're full on ready to sue you, you know? And so having a little bit of that client happiness out here, but like Regina said, these can be different programs. There's a kind of, you know, intake and sales can be running out of your CRM and intake processes. Once they're in the legal systems, maybe they're in your law practice management software with checklists and automations there. And then client happiness might be another system or another process. Um, I, you could use Asana boards or Monday or ClickUp or Airtables, right? To, to do check in on clients and make sure we're giving them a, a wow experience. Does this make sense, you guys, how you can have different systems that work together but are have kind of a different purpose? Give, yeah, give people a want an all-in-one, but that's, to me, I've just not found an all-in-one that does everything well. They just they just don't. Yeah. And I've tried them all. I literally have used Clio, <laughs> Practice Panther, my case, Smoke, Smoke Ball. All of them you can name, I've used them at least for a year each. And none of them had all of the things that I needed. So I just built my own. 
Um, I was using monday.com for a while and I've switched it over to Airtable. So yeah. it's hard to find an all-in-one that does everything right. And if you are continually frustrated and you've talked to an expert about a particular, um, yes, Joseph, this is being recorded, about a particular aspect of your system that you don't like and you cannot get it to work and an expert can't get it to work, then you can take a little spoke out of that wheel and just use something else. So I use Lawmatics solely for intake. They're trying to be a full practice management system. I don't think they're there yet. I'm not using them for that. I use them just for intake, intake, just my drips, um, just my automated text and all of that. So I I don't use it for anything else because it's really, really good at that one thing that I need it to be really, really good at. And that's what this is about, everybody, is that you have different systems, different elements, and they're going to evolve and change. And, you know, programs, some of them get better and they they listen and they improve it. Some of them don't. You find something else. And um, so don't get so stuck in the mud that you feel like it has to be perfect or only one way. It's going to change. It's going to evolve. Your systems will evolve with you and your team is going to help you build them. So my final comment to all of you is like, what do you need help with next? Like, and who on your team can help you? If you have an assistant, can they help you with it? Maybe you're by yourself, right? Maybe you do really well with just some videos and learning. Sometimes you need the one-on-one help, somebody to, to do it. Sometimes you need the resource. Um, I, I know I've had tons of clients have used people in from Upwork or um, from, there's a couple of different programs that you can get people that can jump in and do work for you. Um, so, you know, it, again, it's, it's knowing your style of learning and what is the best way to support you in all of this. So, We want you guys to build systems. We want you to build automations. We want you to create the environment where you don't have to work as hard and your clients have that wow experience. So I think first and foremost, um, I would ask everybody to just take a quick hot moment and write down between these three areas, what do you think you need help with most, right? For these are the three most most common areas where I see lawyers, yes, maybe you need help with marketing and other things, but in terms of automating your process and making it smooth, do we need to focus on intake and sales? Is that clunky? Is there like not going very well? Is it in your legal systems? There's bottlenecks. People don't know what to do. People are making mistakes, right? Is it in client happiness? You realize that you just don't have the time to follow back up with all these people and make sure they're doing well. And we just need to train up. And listen, it can be all three, but generally I like to say, spend four to six weeks, eight weeks on on a section, get it good, build the system and get it working and then move to the next one, right? So we can't always fix everything all at once unless you have a team of 10 people, then we might be able to be working on that. (laughs) But in the beginning, pick one thing and say, let's focus on that, okay? Um, Definitely one thing at a time so you don't get overwhelmed. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I want to jump in with a couple of opportunities. I want to thank Regina for hosting this series. I really do hope she continues every Friday. Um, I want to see her. I Regina, this I this template PowerPoint is yours, so that everybody every Friday can easily plug and play and add their information in. So you make it easy on you because I just love that you're willing to share so much. But I don't want you to be doing all the work every week. Um, but. I wanted to also extend to all everybody on here and everybody watching the video later, the replay and such, um, a couple of next steps and a freebie for all of you. So option A is the freebie. I want all of you to take advantage of that. That's the systems audit and triage call. You can get on with a member of my team and do a triage, where are you, and a mini systems audit. And that's completely free. We do normally charge for it. For this group, it is absolutely free so that you guys can just get a quick little, like, where are you? What is priority? What needs to be dealt with, right? All of that stuff. That's that's where we need to go first and foremost. So I'm going to put this, um, the freebie landing page in the chat for everybody so that you can get that and 
Um, I, if nothing else, please take advantage of a quick, where are you systems audit? Um, some of you already identified you need the intake sales. Some said I need legal systems. Some say I need, you know, the client happiness because Regina's Regina. And I always want to bless Regina and this group with goodness. Um, we did a special, we don't normally do these kind of discounts on our packages, but if you just know you need some one-on-one -on -one coaching help and you need to work with a coach on your intake or sales systems, great. Jump on in, let us know. We're, we'll drop the price for you and everything. Just get two 90 minute calls, enough time to roll up our sleeves. Let's get in and build some of these systems. Let's help you establish an automation or two. Um, we are big on like, getting in it's coaching slash consulting. I, I saw Randy, um, Randy had posted about consultants, get in and help you build. And we definitely do a lot of that, but we also give you guidance. Um, and then the final one is our legal systems manual package. Um, it just went live this last month. After all these years, I finally got talked into taking not just all of mine, but also from all these other practice areas. And it's about 200 pages of already done for you policies and procedures and checklists and examples and materials for all different practice areas. You get to pick two practice areas, like you could pick personal injury and civil litigation, or you could pick state planning and probate. Um, anyway, so we give you 33% off on those two. Um, so that's there for you guys to take advantage of. Um, I will drop the discount code um, in the chat as well for that. So, I mean, again, this is, um, this is an opportunity for you guys to like, just take advantage of getting help and save yourself 20, 30 hours of time, um, and not have to like start at the scratch and just get in, refine it, make it work. Um, but anyways, at a minimum, I want everyone to do a systems audit just because it gives you clarity of what do you need to work on for the next half of the year? So um, lots of really, really awesome elements for the legal systems manual and other systems. We've got all different departments um, that we've built out and such. So Regina, anything you want to add in here? I know you, yeah, you've been in just, Paris. We've talked about all these things before. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to answer um, uh, Jim's question uh, real quick. So I don't know if you missed the Airtable thing. His question was, he wants to find a way to sort of build in monthly automated, um, you know, updates to the clients because he does criminal law and kind of wants to sort of automate that. So you can with most systems, most uh, project management systems will allow you to automate it. So this is my automation, which is extremely basic, that says when the record is updated, it sends an email. And since this is my demo, it's sending it to me. Um, but that's what that's the automation. So when I change the status in here, it's automatically going to send them an update. You can change it to, it'll automatically send that update every month. I don't need to do that because I've promised my clients updates every two weeks. And to be perfectly honest, if the, if the situation really hasn't changed, I might add some filler words, <laughs> which uh, basically changes the last modified date. So I don't really have to do a lot for it to be the most updated status. But you can set the automation to automatically send an email every month. I just don't do it that way because every time I change it, it sends them an email and it's posted to their portal. And I'm doing that at a minimum every two weeks. I usually do it every week because I my whole thing is about under promising and over delivering. So I'm usually updating it every week, but I'm I'm asking the look them to um see if there's any updates every two weeks. So that way, you know they're happy getting an update every week because they thought it was going to be every two weeks. So the short answer is yes, there's a lot, lots of ways to automate um, sending those emails in pretty much any program. You can have it triggered to when you change it, it automatically sends an email or you can just have a static one that says every month you're, you're just sending the email. I just prefer to do it when I have something new to tell the client. So they're not getting the same email um, over and over again. Cause then at that point it looks like, you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> so the, the other thing about automation is you don't necessarily want them to know. <laughs> so even with my initial text that I send out with the um, 
with the potential clients, they don't necessarily know it's canned. I don't know how they don't know. It sounds canned to me, but people respond and say, thanks, Regina. I can't wait to hear from you. I'm like, okay, great. Um, but the key is that you are delivering services. You're delivering information to the client, but it doesn't sound canned. Um, so I don't know that I have all the answers to that, but that's the goal. <laughs> awesome. I, um, I love that there's so many different ways we can automate client communications to make our lives better, make our clients' lives better, make our team members' lives better, so that everyone is has confidence of what the process is, what needs to happen next. Um, it doesn't happen overnight, everybody. I mean, back in my law firm days, I spent endless hours and weekends writing all these policies and procedures. Um, I also know how much happier life is when you're able to like have these automations, have these systems in place, which is partially why I do what I do. I love helping people like get to the other side of chaos, right? So listen, if nothing else, I give us in the chat one more time, a thumbs up, a smiley, a heck yeah. Um, hopefully you all got super awesome value out of this hour. Regina, thank you for hosting. And I am hopeful that all of you take us up on that systems audit, just because I want to make sure you all have a good game plan for what do you need to work on first? A little triage goes a long ways so that you can start building those systems and automations. Um, Regina, thank you. Thank you as always sure. for having us. And if anybody wants to come hang out with Regina and I in Paris in September, uh, message me or email me, Kristen at Upleveling Your Business. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. All right, I'm stopping the recording now.